listening to the Arkansas AgCast, where we discuss the latest news, trends, and issues impacting Arkansas farmers and ranchers. Our show is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau Federation and hosted by Rob Anderson and Jason Brown. All righty. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. How is everyone after, uh, Robert, you feeling refreshed after a week off? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to stay refreshed very long in this heat, though. Yeah. You know, well, just... you say that, um, people probably think I'm nuts. I'm wearing a vest right now, <laughs> but it is. Hey, they've cranked it uh, in here to keep us cool. So. The air is on yeah. in this place. I am here to tell you. So, uh, yeah, it's, but outside, very hot. Yeah. Uh, record setting temps i think this week and and next we may have the longest streak of 100 plus days Ooh, in how june exciting. yeah uh if i didn't misunderstand the meteorologist well that's something not to look forward to tell you somewhere uh else it was hot this week was in rogers <laughs> we were nice. uh, we were up there for the uh southern region commodities conference mm-hmm. uh, this is a conference that brings uh, commodities departments from farm bureaus uh, all across the South, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there were eight or 10 states involved and it, it rotates to different right. states each year. So generally speaking, the event um, goes, let's say four days and it starts. So they do a half day of meetings and then a half day of They had a lot of fun while they were up and, there too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think some top golf was involved, but also, <laughs> tours like tyson and and things like that so a little bit of fun a lot of bit of learning Uh, and apparently they dress very casually you were up there and there was some shorts yeah uh, show here i show up in my my business casual i got slacks on button up like ready for this meeting i walk in everybody's wearing shorts and and polos and uh yeah they know how to do it let's just say i was looked like the guy from (laughs) pr and not commodities but anyway i think that was a thank you i think that was a uh I th- <laughs> that was more generous than that that little yeah. comical bit deserved. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think everybody had a good time, learned a lot. We heard a presentation. Some staff from the Senate Ag Committee mm-hmm. um, came down to talk about the Farm Bill. We heard some things. Um, several other experts present on on dairy and other topics right. like, like that. Um, also exciting this week. Uh, we had our first appearance yeah, on, on the vine, the vine, KTHV, yeah. KTHV 11, uh, the vine. It was Tuesday morning mm-hmm. and we're going to be there, uh, on there again on June 28th, Tuesday morning. Yeah. Uh, it was a great, uh, fun little thing we're doing. Uh, it's some education about, uh, Arkansas Farm Bureau first, uh, who we are, what we do and why we do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, you know, we're going to be doing some education on agriculture, uh, yeah. showing some, some crops at some point, different things, quizzing the host. You know, we, we had some fun. And uh, But Jenny was on there the other day. She introduced it, the concept, showed our Filthy Farms uh, videos, Filthy Farm Job videos. She did a great job. Yeah. Like I knew she would. I don't think <laughs> I've got – I don't think yeah. I'm going to stand a chance of inching her out of that spot. <laughs> I don't think you will yeah. either. No, um, it was a good day. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think we'll – we're going to enjoy that. It's a great relationship. Yeah, those, those, the anchors there seem to be really into it too. I know we've heard them talk a couple of times about their own personal connections to agriculture. So it's good, it's good to be a part of that show. It's at nine o'clock in the morning, every, yeah. every weekday, what we're on there, uh, two, two Tuesdays a month as it stands right yeah. now. If you want to see Jenny's appearance, yep. uh, see some of the scenes from the filthy farm jobs series, and uh, hear more about, uh, see see what we talked about on the show. I believe we have a link on our Facebook page with a couple of photos from her appearance. That's right. And it's, and it's been out there on Twitter. Uh, you can find it, I think, on the KTHV website as well. So. Yeah. So go check that out and uh, see how we're sharing uh, agriculture uh, to the broader audience. That's right. Right. I'm calling it KTHV. It's THV 11. I'm not, I'm old. I, so, not KTHV, I know. you know. Yeah. We've talked about our ages multiple times yes. on the show, so I'm no one surprised. Um, so, what else you got? Well, something we'll talk about a little bit more. This is farm, Farmer's Market Week. Uh, it's that time of year. Uh, some other things going on there, uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, what else? Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, let me see. Convention. I was trying to get the dates on these. So yeah. one thing that came out uh, two weeks ago, while we right. were off, the week we were off, okay. I think, um, American Farm Bureau has announced the 2023 conference uh, information, the, the at least early yeah. early information on that. And I believe that that'll be held January 6th through 11th of 2023. Okay. Always, always a January meeting. Right. But this time it is in sunny Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. And so sunny Puerto Rico in the winter time. So that's nice. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a nice little, yeah. nice little break. So what we'll do is um, we'll continue sharing more. I mean, it's really early. I mean, really yeah. what we can tell you is the dates and the location right, right now. Um, but certainly if they allow us to keep doing this podcast, um, yeah, we'll, see we'll, how long we last. we'll continue yeah. right now. We just, or someone hide. else will be bringing you that information. Yeah. Some, someone else, yeah. uh, we had in the basement, maybe they'll lock us out of our studio. <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, yeah. So we'll continue bringing information about that as we, as we get closer. But right sure. now, I guess if you want to say the date, January 6th through the 11th, uh, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. All right, well, let's get rolling with some news. Uh, First up today, we've got some uh, national agriculture policy news. Uh, According to a report from Brownfield Ag News, a group of House Republican congressmen have signed on to a bill that would reverse regulatory burdens and reduce farm input costs. That's what they're hoping it will do. It's called the Reducing Farm Input Costs and Barriers to Domestic Production Act, and it would require the... uh, Biden administration to reverse certain policies that the House Ag Committee ranking member Glenn Thompson says are barriers to sustainable ag production. Arkansas Congressman Rick Crawford says the bill would address high input costs by providing some incentives for domestic production. Uh, He says, we have chosen to rely on foreign sources. Um, We've done that with energy, but we can't afford to do that with agriculture. Uh, because he says we don't want to create a state of food insecurity. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Brownfield report says the bill would offer cl- would offer to clarity to waters of the U.S. regulations. I know we're very familiar with that, or our Arkansas farmers are. Uh, rescind an SEC rule on climate-related disclosures, reinstate 2020 NEPA rules, and require an uh, economic analysis of GIPSA rules. Don't know GIPSA. I know NIPA. NEPA is National Environmental Policy Act, but yeah, um, this is this is important. I mean, obviously, we know. Matter of fact, I'll give a plug here, uh, talking about input costs and, and things like that. Right. Um, if you if you go and look at Talk Business and Politics, uh, TalkBusiness.net, I believe uh, you'll see an article in today's or, or in this week's edition uh, that is written by George Jared and their ag reporter, mm-hmm. but he uses a ton of data and information from Mark Lambert, right? Uh, right our right. one of our economists here, mm-hmm. uh, to actually quantify um, the impact of, of rising costs on farmers in Arkansas. Right. Uh, I believe that's, I don't have it in front of me. I believe uh, we expect a, a revenue decrease, a profit decrease of 4%. Yeah, we shared, um, uh, we shared that on our Twitter uh, feed. Yeah. Um, so you can find yeah. it easy there. You can find the link there. And I think, of course, you know, Talk Business has been pushing it out there. It says Arkansas farmers face 4.5% decline in profitability in 2022. Yeah. yeah. So profitability hit. Uh, we also did some work with a THV 11 separate from right. what we were talking about earlier this week. They were looking uh, for some help on a story. Uh, so we, we uh, called on Arkansas County Farm Bureau President uh, Wes Long to provide some data points on that and fuel costs as we're as right. we're entering irrigation season, we're seeing that fuel costs really being a hindrance. So anyway, we're doing lots so, of coverage and glad to see some policy yeah, to address this. That is a big issue, as you can see from our our analysis and the stories we've been doing, and and now some action at the national level. Yeah, great to see. All right. Well, moving on, uh, you have a unique and historic opportunity to make your voice heard uh, on the 2023 Farm Bill. Um, we told you a few weeks ago, uh, I think we, before we took a break, our break, about the Senate Ag Committee field hearing uh, being hosted um, in Arkansas. Now we're asking you to get involved in that and make your voice heard. Uh, the U.S. Senate Ag Committee on Ag, Forestry, and Nutrition will hold a field hearing in Jonesboro tomorrow, Friday, June 17th. The hearing will focus on the Farm Bill. Uh, it's being hosted by the committee's ranking member, John Bozeman, uh, Republican from Arkansas. 
uh, and the hearing will be an opportunity for producers to share their priorities uh, for the farm bill, which is due for reauthorization next year. Uh, please make plans to attend tomorrow. Uh, remember, they are asking folks to register at ar.rsvp at ag.senate.gov. I won't repeat that. We've got it all over Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, Farm Bureau uh, channel, so go there. But here's the deal. This this is sort of breaking news. Um, I heard right before we came in here, President Arkansas Farm Bureau uh, President Rich Hillman is set to testify at the hearing tomorrow. Okay, great. So – um, I know we've got a lot of folks going, mm -hmm. um, 20 or more folks just in board members and, and staff. Right. Um, we're asking farmers, if you're there, please attend. It's in your backyard. It's an opportunity. This is a it's major a, deal. It's a rare opportunity. Well, I'll give you an example. Stanley Hill, our VP of government affairs, uh, and I were talking this morning. He says, you know what, Jason, it, in, in my career, we won't talk about how long that was, but that's been. But he says, in my career, I don't think I've ever attended a field hearing before. I've, I've attended no. in hearings, you know, in D.C. and so on yeah. and so forth. Obviously, at the state level, he says, I've never had the opportunity to attend a field hearing before. So, so. It's a, it really is. When I when I said it's unique and historic, it is an opportunity. And the whole purpose is to, is to make our the priorities of the Arkansas farmers uh, known. Right. Um in, in in this setting so please make plans to attend that it's at on campus at arkansas state i should add uh in jonesboro it's on campus um at um i'm sorry at riceland hall in, okay. at the fowler center in riceland hall if you can get to the fowler center if you can get to the basketball coliseum yeah. you can get to the fowler center and then right in the door there so sorry well and again yeah that that is just such a unique opportunity and i hope I hope farmers and, and, and ranchers and everybody in the area who can make it can make it because it's, it's an important deal. Yeah. Uh, now, taking a step back from uh, national issues for a minute, we have some exciting news for some hardworking Arkansas farm families. Uh, we have eight district farm families that have been named in the 75th Annual Arkansas Farm Family of the Year program, representing the diversity of Arkansas agriculture, which, of course, is the state's largest industry. Uh, mm -hmm. The district families will now be judged uh, for the Arkansas Farm Family of the Year, and that will be announced in December. The district farm families uh, of the year are in the East Central Dis District, the Lindsay family of Forest City, St. Francis County. Mm -hmm. North Central District, the Hayes family of Pleasant Plains, Independence County. Northeast District, the Smith family of Paragould in Green County. Northwest District, the Hostetler family of Green Forest in Carroll County. Southeast District, the Young family of Poplar Grove, Phillips County. Southwest District, the Robertson family of Hope, Hempstead County. A West Central District, the Honeycutt family of Arkadelphia in Clark County. And a Western District, the Stowball family of Atkins in Conway County. Uh, farm Family of the Year program begins each year with the selection of the top farm families in each county and culminates in December with the selection of the Farm Family of the Year. Uh, they'll, they, the farm, Arkansas Farm Family of the Year will then go on to represent Arkansas at the Swisher Sunbelt Expo Southeastern Farmer of the Year competition. Did you know, Arkansas has had two Southeast Farmer of the Farm of the Year winners, Brian and Nan Kirksey, in Clark County in 2008, and the Willie Family Farms of Mississippi County in 2016. Mm. All families are judged on the farm production efficiency, management, family life, and rural community leadership. We'd be remiss if we didn't remember, uh, mention the sponsors of the Arkansas Farm Family of the Year program, which, of course, Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, and the Farm Credit Associations of Arkansas. Additionally, support for the program is provided by the Arkansas Agriculture Department, Arkansas Department of Career Education, Arkansas Press Association, and the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture and the USDA's Farm Service Agency. Natural Resources, Conservation Service, and Rural Development. I love long governmental agency names. Yeah, no doubt. But uh, it's a great program, and uh, uh, congratulations to all those families. It's a big honor. Yeah. Good good news, and congrats. Yeah, again, congrats to those, to those families. And uh, I know they'll certainly have a busy few months ahead as we yeah. continue that, that competition. Well, we know that farmers have a lot to be stressed about right now. Uh, farm family of the year being one of them if you're yeah. a finalist but costs or contests uh, yeah. we got a lot of stressors 
But Purdue has quantified those concerns in its Ag Economy Barometer Survey. I thought we'd talk about some of those, the results from that survey. Um, higher input costs and input availability are, are the top two concerns reported by farmers in the most recent Purdue University CME Group Ag Economy Barometer Survey, followed by the risk of declining crop and livestock prices. Uh, crop producers also said that supply chain problems are still an issue across all major crop input categories, and 50% of respondents to the May Barometer Survey said that tight farm machinery inventories are impacting their investment decisions. Input price and excuse me, input price and availability risk were noted by more farmers as their top risk rather than the risk of declining uh, commodity prices. It's virtually unprecedented. I'll say that again. Input price availability risk being noted uh, by more farmers as their top risk rather than declining pr- uh, commodity costs uh, prices is virtually unprecedented and highlights the fact that ag producers face elevated risk across the board. One of the reasons they're so worried about these commodity prices is mm-hmm. input costs going up is a is a real risk. Right. Uh, commodity prices being up kind of helps offset that or can can help offset that. But when if those commodity prices start to decrease, then that changes the game on them. Right. Mid mid game, really. So that's a that's a big concern. And, and interesting information coming out from Purdue University. It's the first time yeah. I've seen this survey. Right. So I'm hoping that we'll 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 plan to keep an eye on that thing yeah. uh, throughout the growing season. Well, on that um, somber note, uh, I guess we now we're going to take a quick break. Yeah, we'll take a break from the news and learn how you can be a champion for your community. Something a little more upbeat. <laughs> Your Arkansas Farm Bureau membership supports our work on behalf of Arkansas farmers, ranchers, and rural communities around the state. From youth leadership programs and academic scholarships, to hunger relief and disaster support, and much more. You can make a difference and be a champion for your community. Join today at ARFB.com. All right. Uh, well, a good example of how our membership helps support our mission is with the Arkansas MASH programs and MASH camps. Um, those are going on right now. We've, we've been running out, uh, checking those out, taking photos. We've supported this program for decades and continue, continue to do so thanks to our contributions to from the Arkansas Farm Bureau Foundation. This week, uh, again, our team is traveling to get those images from the camps across the state of these young people learning about the importance of, you know, and the job opportunities in healthcare and hopefully coming back to their communities later if they pursue those options uh, to provide healthcare in those communities. Yeah, absolutely. We met somebody in Omaha last week who said he was from New York and he says, Hey, my sister moved to Arkansas. Her husband uh, is a doctor and decided to move to a small community in arkansas and, well, and that's practice great. and they're still there yeah and then, and then hopefully the the mash program can you know is, is building more of those future small yeah. small community Agreed. doctors and providers uh summer means a lot of things to people we were talking about the heat earlier uh you know it can mean swimming vacation camps but uh one of the things a lot of people appreciate this time of year are farmers markets selling selling locally grown produce and food products Earlier this week, officials with the Arkansas Department of Agriculture celebrated Governor Asa Hutchinson's proclamation of Arkansas Farmers Market Week, marking contributions made by farmers markets and the agriculture industry to the state's economy. Uh, At the event, uh, Arkansas Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary Wes Ward, said farmers markets made locally grown produce and food products more accessible to all areas of the state, including the uh, urban areas. We continue to see these farmers markets grow and be successful Ward said, which is great for our local producers and our industry as a whole, adding that it's, uh, it helps provide local healthy food options. Tuesday's proclamation took place at the St. Joseph center in North Little Rock, which operates a market selling its own food and goods originally founded as an orphanage in 1908. Mm -hmm. The center now operates a 63 acre farm. They also offer classes and workshops on uh, sustainable, sustainable farming practices. 
On top of that, uh, Governor Hutchinson has issued a proclamation of June as Dairy Month in the state. He did this after a meeting with dairy farmers at the state capitol yesterday. On hand for that event were Grace Pepler and her mother, Ruth, uh, who run Dogwood Hills Guest Farm near the Buffalo River. We've also done a video on uh, the Peplers and uh, their, their farm. Uh, they offer guests a hands-on experience milking and caring for cows. Um, Grace Pepler says visitors from across the country come to their farm to experience the dairy industry up close. If you want more information on Arkansas Farmers Markets, you can find the Arkansas Farmers Market Association on Facebook, or you can visit the Arkansas Department of Agriculture website. If you want, uh, if you want to check out more on uh, Dogwood Hills or the video I mentioned about the Peplers, visit arfb.com or the Arkansas Farm Bureau YouTube channel. Awesome. Uh, Matthew is at a, uh, a creamery last week, I think, yeah. and holding a goat in a photo I saw. I was very jealous. Goat cheese yeah. is one of my favorite. It was a goat uh, dairy creamery operation, and it's a very interesting video. The, but this one that you're talking about, Dogwood Hills. Or, yeah, or the, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, the White the River one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. a lot of these interesting places in Arkansas yeah. providing these. A little great, bit of mix of agritourism and great and, and local food products, you know. So. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, you know, we've been covering planting progress, moving from from dairy or, or goats to uh, row crop. We've been covering planting progress uh, each week in the state. Uh, we'll continue doing that, uh, but we are. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll continue giving crop updates, but we're going to call planting complete. Uh, there are a few acres left, but those represent really 5% or probably less for the entire state. So we're going to turn our attention to crop progress and health. Um, we are currently working on uh, videos for crop progress as well. So what, what I'll give you is some really uh, uh, concise statistical information probably um, but if you're interested in the f- next few weeks, look for uh, videos from us uh, sitting down with the likes of Jeremy Ross, Jared Hardkey, uh, Bill Robertson, Jason Kelly, you know, the crop mm-hmm. specialist from the uh, division, uh, and um, to give more in-depth sort of guidance and recommendations. Right. But for now, 75% of the corn and cotton crop is rated good to excellent. There are some acres reporting fair or even poor condition, but both crops look good for the state Uh, on the whole Uh, 80 percent of the peanut crop is reported to be good to excellent condition as of this week 75 percent of the rice crop is rated good to excellent and the soybean crop reports nearly 85 percent of that same good to excellent rating 65 percent of the livestock population is rated rated as good to excellent and of note none of the alfalfa uh, hay crop rates is excellent and only 58 percent of the crop is reported as good uh, we talked on the last episode, I think, about hedging a less than quality hay crop. That was when Brian hosted, uh, co-hosted. We and we're continuing to see challenges, according to the USDA report in that in that hay. So go back uh, to the last episode two weeks ago and listen to some of the tips that we shared. Uh, if you need to, uh, if you're concerned about your hay quality, if there's a certain metric though that you'd like to hear us report on each week that wasn't included here then please let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to include that uh, on the podcast. And our weekly reminder uh, that farmers remain incredibly busy. Uh, Please, please, please keep an eye out for farm equipment moving in traffic, whether in the northwest part of the state or the uh, far delta. Uh, That farm equipment uh, moves in traffic in a very different way than our vehicles do. And uh, especially... Keep an eye out if you're on a, a county road or rural highway. Um, just know that uh, sharing the road uh, helps keep everyone safe and, and food on your table. And that's a message we're going to be sharing for a while. So you'll, you'll hear us talk about that again. It's just important. And yeah. um, for the safety of everyone, and it's, uh, you know, this is being in the agriculture state that it is, uh, it's pretty common. That's right. Um, the Arkansas Ag Department has announced the Arkansas Grown Grant Pilot Program, which will benefit fruit and vegetable producers in northwest Arkansas. The Arkansas Department of Agriculture and the Walton Family Foundation have partnered to offer the Arkansas Grown Grant Pilot Program for farmers residing uh, in Benton, Washington, Madison, and Carroll counties in northwest Arkansas. That's farmers residing and farming in those counties. 
This pilot program offers grant funding to eligible farmers who are committed to increasing capacity for wholesale fruit and vegetable production, resulting in more local food. Grants up to a maximum of $15,000 will be awarded for eligible expenses to at least 30 farmers in the four-county pilot program area. Free assistance in completing the application is offered through the Arkansas Small Business and Technology Development Center in Fayetteville. Uh, The application and link to this is available at ArkansasGrown.org. Yeah, go out if you're uh, raising vegetables and fruits. Go. That's a good opportunity. Try to be a part of this program. That'd be really helpful. Well, it wouldn't be a podcast as yeah. we come to the end of the news without Mr. Pistol's This Day in History. Did anything uh, as important <laughs> as this podcast happen on a day in history? And or us? how sad. I, I think it was yeah. pretty, and uh, no sad news today. Okay, That's good. a good, good. thing. Uh, yeah. Um, it It wouldn't be a good kick off to summer if it, if we didn't have a little summer related news. Okay. All right. I like it. Uh June 16th, 1884. Okay. Wow. The first roller coaster in America opened at Coney Island. Huh. Wow. That Coney Island had the first roller coaster in all of America. In all of America okay. in in 1884. Wow. I mean, yeah. I don't know about you, but I would not want to get on that thing. No, no. <laughs> no doubt. I did one time. I think they called it the Zip and Pippin at Liberty Land. Yeah, that right. thing was wooden and, and janky. Uh, last oh. wood roller coaster I, I got on, I swore I'd never get on one. Yeah, it, it hurt. Uh, uh, today is also Phil Mickelson's birthday. Okay. So, Some controversy yeah, there. Yeah, you're uh, throwing in a Phil controversial Mickelson. figure now. You know, Thank you. Uh, that's... I didn't say I wouldn't be controversial. I just said I wouldn't yeah, be I like a, a downer. Well, the PGA so. has told Mr. Mickelson no thanks. Well, there you yeah. go. Uh, all right. Well, all right well, we want to turn this into a, a golf call-in show because we can get some comments. On it. <laughs> I bet we can. I bet we can. All right. all right. Well, thanks for sticking around. That wraps up the news for this week. Uh, as always, we appreciate you tuning in uh, to the Arkansas AdCast, whether it be on video here or uh, later on. Yeah, in the audio version, we're grateful for you taking the time to watch and listen. Quick editorial note, we've heard a a few comments about the volume being kind of soft, especially if you're in a piece of equipment in a field. So we are working uh, very hard to beef that up. Yes, we are. Mr. Anderson. Remember, you can catch the live stream every Thursday at 2 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Make sure you turn on notifications to get those alerts when we go live. Listen to the audio version later on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, the Arkansas AdCast is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau Federation and hosted by me, Jason Brown. And and me, Rob Anderson. Our show is produced by Brian Pistole and Matthew Magdafrau. We'll see you next week. (laughs) 